Well, hello everyone, I'm Brandon Bondorfer, and today we're gonna to dive into using OneNote on your iPad. We have a complete video that gives you a 10 minute overview on how to use OneNote on your iPad, but today I'm gonna to give you guys some insider tips that are gonna help maximize your productivity with using OneNote for note taking. I will include the expanded videos in the description and at the end so that you guys can experience that. But today I really wanna focus on just increasing your productivity and also give those that are first using OneNote for the first time some quick lessons on utilizing. So let's dive right into it. First and foremost, when I open up OneNote, you have this ability to navigate here. And you'll see on the left side, when I click on a page, this will expand. If I click over here, it'll make it full screen. If I click back here, it'll bring back my notebooks. I like the full screen view, especially on the smaller iPads. On the bigger iPad, generally I'll leave it not full screen so I can see my page section. But how do I get the notebook in here in the first place? Well, if you create a new notebook on this device, great. If you imported it from another application or you created it on another computer, you're going to have to go through a little process to open it and you simply go ahead, get to this outer view where you see your name. You may have to go in and sign into your account. You can add multiple accounts. So if you have a personal account and a work account, you can add multiple accounts. Once you sign into those accounts, you'll be able to click on more notebooks. From here, you'll see all the notebooks that you recently used. You may have to go into browse to find a notebook under the particular account. And generally those are saved under the documents folder in a folder called OneNote notebooks. Once you locate your file there, you'll be able to view it. It'll download and sync to here and you'll see it in the tab. A couple things that I think are really important to know. If I click on this, it'll expand it. I can close the notebook here. I can change the color of the notebook, but also I can reorganize it by holding on and dragging it. I can reorganize it. That's really helpful, especially if you're like me and you have a planning system where you have multiple years. I can keep the year that I'm focused on up top and I can see that right in my navigation. Now when I tap on a notebook, no matter what notebook I tap on, it's gonna give me the option of seeing the next layer. A lot of times when I look at using notebooks in OneNote, I think of them as filing cabinets and drawers. We just opened up a drawer and here we have different file folders and inside those file folders, there's different pages that we can see. So if you're looking to get to like say our January month, here it is and that's how you get to the individual pages. Now, one thing that a lot of people ask me is, hey, I got a hyperlink version, but when I tap on it, it doesn't do anything. Well, you need to drop the stylus, you need to put yourself here in text mode, and then if you tap on the date, it'll bring in this prompt asking you to open, and then that will take you to the particular date. If I jump to the year out of view, you can see I have the entire year here, and if I wanna get to June 7th, I tap on June 7th and hit open, and it'll take me right to June 7th. If I click on a little at symbol here and hit open, it'll take me back to the year of view. Well, you have to be in text mode and you have to tap on the link. And why is that? I believe that the people that designed OneNote on these mobile devices thought, hey, I'm gonna be generally using a stylus. I don't wanna be creeping across the page and hit the hyperlink and jump to another section of the planning system or any notebook in general without having the intention to do so. So to kind of like prevent you from doing that, they added this feature where you need to be in text mode and you need to tap on a link and hit the open button in the dialog box. It might feel like a process, but once you do it a few times, it seems pretty natural and pretty easy, but you can always go back to using just the tab drawer navigation that we talked about. Hyperlinks on the desktop are absolutely awesome because I can put my cursor on it and boom, get right to where I wanna go. So now that I'm on a particular page, what does this mean for me? Well, across the top, we have our different tools and we'll just talk about a couple of them. But here I have the ability to go and draw and from draw I have all these different tools and options. You're gonna see if I click on a tool, like a pen tool, I have the ability to change the color, change the thickness. I can either, I can even go into a more advanced library and then I can hit apply. It's going to save this like setting as like a pre-setting. So if I go to another pen tool and come back, those settings are all here so you can add pens across the top. You also have highlighters. You can also create a new pen or highlighter tool and really give yourself a set of options. As you can see in my planning system, I use color blocking and therefore I have the highlighting across the top. One thing about OneNote that's different than a lot of other applications is when it comes to using the eraser, 
the eraser basically erases everything on a page. Well, the problem with that is if I have type or text and I've highlighted it, I don't want to necessarily erase the type or text underneath it. So what I do is if you see, I expand all of my highlighting past my writing. What this allows me to do is I can go ahead and just easily erase those highlights without affecting the text. Now if I hit undo and bring that back, it's all there, but what happens if I am changing my time of coffee, I can choose the lasso tool and select the whole thing and then I'm gonna meet a half hour earlier. Well maybe I wanna keep that blue box there but we're no longer having coffee, we're having breakfast. I can use the lasso tool now and just change the text by selecting just the text and not selecting all the highlighting. And I'm just gonna pull this off here and I'm gonna hit tap and delete. And now I go back in the pen tool and I'm gonna call it breakfast. And that fits in the same box. So that is a really cool little feature, a little hack, a little pro tip to utilizing that. Some of you might be saying, hey Brandon, I wanna be able to take my stylus and write the text. You can see there's this little tool here that has a little A in it. If I take my finger and tap on the tool, it's gonna to place a cursor and you're gonna see the keyboard pop up. If I go ahead and just start writing on the screen, it'll take that writing and convert it to text. Now I can use that lasso tool and I can move that writing to where I want it to be positioned. I can go ahead and select that text box in type mode, hit a space for this case, go back to here and keep writing. And it'll keep filling in that text box. What happens if you don't have that A? Well, really easy way to go ahead and quit OneNote, go into your settings, find your pencil tool here, and make sure that scribble is turned on. If you turn scribble on and you don't immediately see it in your OneNote toolbar, it's likely because you have to reboot that particular app. You may even need to reboot the device, but it will show up there. If that scribble tool is turned off, this feature will not be present and will go away. For some people, they really like it. For some people, they don't. The one thing I don't like is I don't like it right in the beginning. And no matter what I do to move it, it always will jump back to the beginning. So just take a mental note that if you want to then write in the planner or write your notes, you need to be able to select that. And for those that just want to go ahead and write, go ahead and hit text mode, choose the text box, place your cursor, and then go ahead and write. If you have a keyboard attached to this, it makes it a nice feature to be able to type out your notes. And at any time, you can use the lasso tool to move those notes, copy them, paste them. Now, there is a lot of different tools inside of OneNote, especially on the iPad, and there's a lot of different things you can do. You can also create your own hyperlinks by clicking on a page, and you can either choose to copy that page, move it, or copy link the page. I really like this feature because if I go into say my meetings here and if I go into meetings and I have a meeting here with Tom and I tap on that and copy link the page, well I can actually go right to my meeting date and I could click on say this spot right here at say six o'clock or so and I can hit paste and what does it do? It puts that meeting with Tom right there and if I tap on that meeting page and hit open, it takes me to that meeting page. That to me is where that having to tap and click and open becomes really convenient because what I often will do is I will hyperlink to all my meeting notes or all my daily journaling right off of my daily planning page and use it as an index so I can easily navigate throughout the system without having to jump. And that way I can also keep my notes in one spot. I can have all my meetings here or I can build out custom sections. So I have a section for clients, a section for my note taking, as well as a, a section for my expenses. So if you're getting started with OneNote, I hope these tips kind of help fast track your productivity a little bit. We have tons of tips and tricks on our site. In the description, I'm actually gonna leave a link to a playlist of all the videos that we did on OneNote. There are some pretty advanced videos in there and there's a handful of videos that focus on just key actions. So if you do me a favor, check out that playlist. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. Subscribe to our channel if you wanna see more. And if you got comments or questions, folks, go ahead, hit those comments. Let's hear them. 
I'll respond to you and give you the best information that I have accessible to me. And let's keep moving forward with note taking in OneNote. I'm Brandon Bondorfer, Lord willing, we'll see you in the next video.